I'm so happy that you have a moment of time that we can chit chat. I just screened your show. It's going to air Monday morning. And it's Grace Aria, in case you guys don't know her. And the show is fabulous. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. Yes, in the show we discuss uh, value and color and you take all that to a whole nother level. And since we taped the show, it's been a little bit of time. You've come up with a tool, you're working on new things, so I wanted to catch up with you. That's terrific. So where would I begin? Well, tell people just a little bit how strongly you feel about value and color because you got a whole segment on that and I am a value maven and you took it to levels that I had never been exposed to. Well, I know talking about value, I'll be honest with you, every piece that I've done and every problem with every piece that I've done that I've encountered and we all do, we all have problems here and there. In fact, I have one on the right that I'm struggling with. <laughs> I have found that the problem is never the fabric, it is never the color, it's always something wrong with the value. So things just don't gel well because the value is just not correct. So nowadays what I do is I just jump in and look at the thing and I said, okay, what's wrong with the value? And right. that's the first thing I tackle. Well, what's really fun, I'm going to give everybody kind of a sneak peek of one of the things that happened was we got some studio audiences up, some people, and we had uh, them sort value, and it was not a slam dunk. No, it wasn't, was it? No. And it's it's funny because Shelly was talking to me about that before the typing, and I was a little iffy about doing that segment, but she insisted, and I'm glad she did because it really demonstrated that it's not as easy all that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you have sort your value in eight in eight categories, right? Eight values, right? Mm -hmm. And and even so, that still it, it's difficult. And I'm really excited that you've kind of come up with a tool. I want to talk about that. This is news to me because you didn't have it when we taped. No, I did not. The best I think when we taped was what was included in the book which is a copy of that big chart that you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. But this is what was included in the book. Right. Remember? Right. It's, it's a small version. And that's great. Um, but I needed something that is portable, something that I can take to classes, something that people can plop in their bags and, and just when they go shopping or, or put it in their studio when they're working. Well, do you have it with you right now? Yes, I do. Right here. It's a very small thing. If you look at my hand, it's as smaller than my hand, actually. Uh -huh. So it's a very small thing. It's got little holes. So basically, if you're looking for a particular fabric of a particular hue, color, uh, and you want to match up the, uh, the uh, values to it, you put it right behind this particular opening, and then you match up to whichever value it is. If you look at the... Uh, if I come closer to you, you'll see that, for example, if I work on eight values, which is what I do, the lightest one would be eight. It goes around that opening, and the darkest one is the eight mm -hmm. up above. And it's very easy to just put it on that fabric of the color, and it kind of closes everything else around you, and it makes you focus through that opening on the values and the color. Well, I want to see the cover of your book, too, and, and the title of it is, because I want to just throw this in, because I it's a fantastic book. It's Impressionistic you. Applique. Impressionist Applique. Um, the subtitle is Exploring Value and Design to Create Amazing Quilts. Right, right. And then also in the show, we talked about your ingenious way of applique, and in fact, when we uh, premiered the list of who we would be showing the shows this season or whatever, people are like, oh, I can't wait to see how she, app I mean, to teach, and it's really different. You're talking about my new heat set applique technique, right? Yes. Oh, I love it, Alex. I absolutely love it. You know, it's funny because it goes back to about three or four years ago when I had uh, it sent a quilt into a quilt show, and it happened to be done with, believe it or not, Joanne fabric, because I couldn't get anywhere else any grace to do the black and white quilt. And it was a great quilt. They got a lot of great comments from the judges, but there was one in particular that really bit me. It said, next time you should give your quilts a haircut. 
<laughs> well, I, I knew exactly what she was talking about because this fabric, you know, I used to do the regular raw edge applique and fabric does fray and that particular fabric frayed more than ever and it was distracting. I had to agree with her. So I went on this thing about um, trying to find something that would allow me to do raw edge applique but it would start or prevent the fraying. The fraying, yeah. And one thing led to the other. I discovered this particular product which not only helps me prevent the fraying but it actually makes the quilting, the actual machine applique part of the quilting a lot easier too. And what's the name of the product? It's called Heat Set. Manufacturer? The manufacturer, thank you, is Beacon. Okay. Uh, Nice. Well, tell me about what's going on behind you. Well, okay, what you see right here is a quilt that's not quite finished yet. It's still sitting. You see the background is a little muddy because what I sometimes do is I mount them either on a vinyl or I mount them on a uh, netting so that I can audition different mm -hmm. uh, backgrounds for it. But the netting, which is what this one is sitting on, it kind of makes the muddies the background. But it's a hibiscus that I designed for Hoffman. It's one of the new patterns that are going to come out when they go to Houston. Nice. In, I think it is, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you notice very, very closely, not just as a hibiscus, but it's got a little, little uh, gecko up, sneaking up at the oh, top cute, of the thing. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> now, I also heard a, a little rumor that uh, some of these kits and patterns of yours will be available through Keepsake. Yeah, they are keepsake quilting. As a matter of fact, the latest um, uh, catalog that they have features my new Dawn Rose pattern, which on is on the cover of it, or no, not on the cover of it. Inside no, of not it. on the cover, oh, but all features in it. Yeah, <laughs> they in fact sell the patterns, and they also have kitted some of the patterns. The next uh, catalog will feature another quilt, which I developed for Hoffman. So uh -huh. it's all Hoffman fabrics. It's something called my white breasted nut hat. That is, is now that is wonderful. So people could get that kit and make that. Yep, the kit. Uh, well, they can get the pattern. Let's put it this way. Uh, Keepsake quilting will eventually kit those patterns. I don't. I usually okay. just sell patterns. Okay. Okay. But this was a good memory for me because it's a little drawing that my dad had prior to his death. We used to live in New York at one time and we used to have this white-breasted gnat hatch all over the backyard. And it's a funny bird because when it walks um, on a trunk, on a uh -huh. tree trunk, they walk down like uh -huh. this. So it was a good memory and I made it and it looks like... Now, now I mean, in pre-talking about this, we were talking about how busy you are developing these patterns and all that, but you do travel and teach, right? Yes, I do. I do. That was another thing that's kept me very busy in the last few months. That's great. Now, I'm coming down to the San Diego Quilt Show. Uh, will I see you there? It's the beginning of September. Absolutely. I was going to look for you because I'll be teaching four days. Yeah. I have a four day, I have a two day class followed by a one day class followed by a f another one day class. What are you teaching? So people, you know, in case they. My two day class is that heat set machine applique uh -huh. technique where we take one of my simple patterns and I'll show them how to do the technique and come out with a quilt top at the end. Uh, my third day is uh, something that I call finishing, which will teach them different finishing techniques. You know, there is the envelope technique, there is borders, there is binding, there is just quilting in general. Right. There's so much to talk right. about. And the final day is my favorite, is where they bring a photo that they're really passionate about, and I show them how to create a pattern the way I do my patterns. Boy, I would think that would be a five-day workshop. It could easily warp into that, it couldn't it? Could. Yeah. It could. It yeah. could, yes, it could. And I love doing those because you get so close with the people right. and you really, really get to know them. Right, right. And what is your website? My website is called Amazing Quilts by Grace. Uh-huh. All in one word. Uh-huh. And it's, um, I have a calendar there. So all of this, all of my calendar is right there. I have a blog. Uh, the blog is called What's Up with Grace. And it's, it's very noticeable there. So I do a lot of the kind of trying to spur people to um, take a look at some of this stuff. Great. And you sell your work. John bought a piece of yours. 
Yes, I've been selling more and more. In fact, as we speak, I have about 30 of my quilts sitting at a gallery at Homer, Alaska, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I do sell a few of them. Yay! Well, John loves his a lot. So oh, thank good. you. So <laughs> good. Thank you. That so, was one of my favorites. So speaking of your dad, my dad's just turned 90, and we're having a big party this weekend, so okay. i got to get going and go buy food. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, wishing him a happy birthday and enjoy the party. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, it's been great. Yeah, it has been. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye now.